it's wonderful that you have joined me today on Sunday and today is Defence Sunday. It's when we remember all those um, very faithful men and women who serve in the Defence Forces. Well, I hope that you have with you your service sheet, which you most probably have downloaded from uh, the church's website or you received it via email. Also, I hope that you have your Bible so that you can follow along with me as we uh, read the scriptures. And don't forget as well the devotional, which is at the end of the transcript of my message. So if you're all um, ready to, uh, to begin our service, why don't we start by seeing just as I am. The Lord accepts us just as we are, so let us start by singing that amazing song. to your service sheet we shall begin our service the Lord be with you O oh Lord open our lips and we shall declare your praise our Lord and our Savior told us twice keep watch and be ready for you do not know the day or hour of my return well, knowing that, let us pray the prayer of approach. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let us join with the angels in heaven as we declare the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Join me in praying the Collect of the Day. Eternal God, 
You have taught us that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Keep us awake and alert, watching for your kingdom, so that when Christ the Bridegroom comes, we may go out joyfully to meet him and with him enter into the marriage feast that you have prepared for all who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us open in prayer before we begin listening to the Word of God. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that by patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given to us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I now hand over for our first reading. The first reading is from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse, beginning at verse 1. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned these elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Europe and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Then Joshua said, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. The psalm of the day is Psalm 78, verses 1 to 7. Give heed to my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. For I will open my mouth in a parable and expound the mysteries of former times. What we have heard and known, what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children, but declare to a generation yet to come the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his mighty and wonderful works. He established a law in Jacob and made a decree in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children, that future generations might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in turn might teach it to their sons, so that they might put their confidence in God and not forget his works, but keep his commandments. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1. To 18. Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God 
to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so you will not be dependent on anybody. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him according to the Lord's will. We tell you that we are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let us now sing the gospel song, The Servant King. Christ according to Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 13. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins 
who took, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went out with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let us open up in prayer before I begin my message today. Father God, I pray as we look at your word that we will have ears that are able to hear what your spirit is saying, eyes that will reveal to us the true areas of our lives that need to be changed. And I pray that we will receive the encouragement and the nourishment that your word provides to us. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Well, I've been talking to many saints throughout this last week and they've all commented that this year has really been very tiring. It indeed has been a long year. The virus has interrupted our lives. It's continuing to interrupt our lives. And although we are beginning to see some relaxation of restrictions, we know that in other parts of the world, things are getting even more intense. And we know that another wave of the virus could hit us at any time. There's a problem with weariness and tiredness. It can quickly lead to lethargy and a huge urge to just give up. It leads to the feeling that it's just all too hard to keep going. Today's parable makes very plain the danger in succumbing to spiritual laziness. Jesus is in the middle of teaching his disciples about the last days, what was going to happen prior to his return and what his return was going to be like. And there's one major truth that Jesus keeps emphasizing over and over again. Keep watch, be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. To emphasize his point, Jesus told them the parable of the ten bridesmaids. Jesus begins by explaining that there are two types of people who wait for the arrival of their saviour. The first ensure that they are prepared, the second do not. Jesus calls those who are prepared wise, but those who are not prepared he calls fools. More specifically, Jesus bases their preparedness on how seriously they take their individual responsibility to ensure their lamps have sufficient oil. 
Now, because we're not familiar with what a first century Jewish wedding festival encompasses, it's very easy for us to miss the obvious responsibility each of the bridesmaids held in their hands. Bridesmaids in the first century were not part of the wedding party just to simply wear pretty dresses and to look beautiful in the wedding photos. Bridesmaids had an important responsibility. It was their job to hold up a light in the darkness which would show the way for the groom to travel safely to the wedding banquet. Of course, everyone listening to this story knew that that was the primary responsibility of bridesmaids. It was their one big job, not ensuring the bride's dresses didn't run along the ground. Their big responsibility was to ensure their lamp did not go out. But the five bridesmaids were foolish. They did not look after their lamps. Rather, they allowed their lamps to dry out, to burn up, to become empty. Although we can only surmise why they reneged on their primary responsibility, Jesus said their lack of preparedness was due to their foolishness. So obviously, they were not willing to prepare for what they knew was going to happen. Although they knew what was expected of them, they chose to do it their own way. And they risked everything on the, what they hoped would happen and what they planned was going to happen. As confronting as it is for us to consider, at the beginning of this parable, this story, all the bridesmaids looked exactly the same. They all had lamps and their lamps were all burning brightly. But Jesus revealed that there are those in the kingdom who are not going to endure to the end. There are those who are going to tire before Christ's return and definitely those who are going to tire when Christ's return is delayed. There are those who are going to be fed up with being faithful. These ones who get fed up will allow the world to lull them through distraction and difficulty and before long they will fall fast asleep. You know, there are many people who attend church today who appear to have all the preparations made for heaven. They go through the motions week after week, following religious ceremony, saying all the right words. They look like Jesus' disciples. They talk like Jesus' disciples. But inwardly, their lamps are empty. The oil has run dry. And before long, being part of the church family is no longer really important to them. Just like when a candle runs out of wax, all that remains is a thin trail of smoke. But then suddenly, in the dead of night, a voice cries out, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. This is exactly what Jesus was referring to earlier when he said, They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send out his angels with a mighty blast of a trumpet, and they will gather his chosen ones from all the end of the world. The wise bridesmaids, with plenty of oil with which to burn their lamps, prepared to meet their bridegroom. But the foolish ones, after being awoken from their stupor, sent see that their lamps have become empty and they hastily scramble to find more oil. All their well-laid-out plans have suddenly gone up in smoke. They were caught unawares and so they plead to their wise friends, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise, knowing how precious their oil was, and how they had carefully prepared for this very moment, answered, No, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourself. 
Well, you may ask, wasn't that a bit selfish? Couldn't they have just given them some of their oil? To answer that question, we need to delve into the symbolism behind this story. What's our lamp? What's the oil? And how do we keep our lamps filled? What are our responsibilities as we await our saviour? I mean, we don't carry lamps, nor do we use oil. And so what does Jesus' story mean for us? Well, the lamp in the parable represents our human spirit. Inside the heart of every person is their spirit. The human spirit in the heart of the unbeliever it's like an unlit candle or an empty lamp. Yet the human spirit was created by God for the sole purpose of being lit, of being enlightened by the spirit of God. When we make a decision to welcome Jesus into our lives and we make him both our Lord and our saviour, he blows his spirit into our heart igniting our lamp and from that point on the light of Christ shines through our lives to others. Do you remember Jesus said no one hides a lamp under a cover rather they put it on a stand for all to see. Therefore let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. The light of Christ which is seen by others are the good deeds that we do, which are inspired by the spirit of Christ who is at work in our lives and in our hearts. So what's the oil? Well, in many passages throughout the Bible, oil represents the spirit of God's anointing for empowerment or service or power. It's generally accepted that the oil in this parable represents the presence of God's Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the oil that keeps our spiritual fire burning brightly. That answers the question, why couldn't the wise just give some of their oil to the foolish? You can't bundle up the Holy Spirit in a bottle and give it away. Only God can impart the spirit into a person's heart. But hang on a minute, I hear you say, does that mean that the spirit of God somehow leaks out of us in some way? Well, just like our cars regularly use up all their fuel or our phones need to be regularly charged, we need to be regularly plugging into God to recharge our spiritual batteries. That's why the Apostle Paul exhorted the believers at, at um, Ephesus to be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. In the Greek text, the word to be filled is actually a continuous present tense, making the verse read, be continually filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But interestingly, in Jesus' story, the oil could be purchased. No, I don't think that means we can bottle up bottles of the Holy Spirit and sell them in the bazaar. No, I don't think so. What this means is that there is a price to be paid to obtain this spiritual oil. It tells us how we are to apply Jesus' story into our lives. The oil of the Holy Spirit is costly. It will require the currency of time, effort and obedience. To have the presence of God burning in our hearts is going to cost us something. It will require regularly spending time fellowshipping with our Saviour. It will require spending time fellowshipping and meditating on God's word digging deeply into the Bible to find its hidden treasures. It will require spending time praising and giving thanks to God when every part of you wants to complain, scream or just curl up and give up. But the truth remains, only those who sacrificially spend time day in and day out 
drawing on the oil of the Holy Spirit will ensure that their spiritual fire and fervency keeps burning throughout the long, dark nights. So let us be wise and diligent to keep our lamps filled with oil as we await our Saviour's return. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that the door is still open to your heavenly banquet. Teach us how to draw deeply from your spirit to keep our spiritual lamps burning. May our supply of the spirit never dry out or become empty. Let us follow the example of the Apostle Paul and be continually filled with the spirit of God. And let us also be courageous to join in with the angels who shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Get ready. Amen. Well, having heard and being challenged by God's word, let us stand up and declare the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Elizabeth, who's going to lead us in our prayers and intercessions. Today, on Defence Sunday, we know that you alone are the source of peace. We pray for all who serve in the defence and police forces of this land. Give them courage and comfort in danger, patience in waiting, and discipline in the just use of force. Help us to seek for all people the freedom to serve you and each other in compassion and peace. Lord, as we pray, Bring peace to our world. We continue lifting up to you all peoples of the world, especially for followers of Christ who are being persecuted. We ask that your spirit continue to move in our hearts through our participation in the Bibles for the Persecuted program. We ask, gracious Father, that your spirit fortify all who are experiencing hardship with the courage to remain strong in faith. Grant to each spirit of, of patience and grace that they may be found true and faithful witnesses to the promises you have made. Bring them comfort and teach them to rejoice in being united in the sacrifice of Christ your Son and that they may know that their names are written in heaven among the company of the elect. Lord, as we pray, bring peace to our world. Although we are mindful of believers in other countries, we also lift up to you our neighbours here in South Lakes whose lives are in distress. We pray for our preparations for our Christmas hampers that many who need this assistance over the Christmas season will hear about this ministry. We pray for the following parishioners who are struggling in their health. Adelaide, Monica, Bill, Bev, Ray, Bob, Colin, Susan and Jim. We also pray for Pam's, Pam's family at this time as they deal with the, uh, with a, with a um, loss in their family. Mm. Also we lift up to you others on our heart and mind. Kylie and Ted. Yes. 
Give us courage to share our lives with our neighbours, reaching out to them with understanding minds, generous and compassionate hearts. We thank you for the lives of faithful servants of every age, for all who stand before your throne in worship. Expand our minds, inflame our hearts and ignite our souls that we too may worthily love you and at our life's end, raise us to share with you in glory. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life eternal. Let us conclude by praying as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us our sin and our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Elizabeth, for leading us in our prayers and intercessions. And I hope you inserted those uh, who are on, on your heart and mind in um, during our time of prayer to know that we are praying for them. Well, let us share together the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. The, spirit is with us. the peace of the Lord be always with you. I pray then ask that you take this time to call someone on the telephone or maybe just turn to someone who might be in another room in your home or go outside into your um, in the fresh air and, uh, and, commu and communicate or greet someone over the fence and say the peace of the Lord be with you. We're going to share that now for those of us who are in the church. Well, let us prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper by confessing our sins to our faithful God. Dear friends, the scriptures urge us to acknowledge our sins and not to conceal them from God, our Heavenly Father, but to confess them with a genuine and obedient heart so that we may be forgiven through his infinite goodness and mercy. Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of our gracious God as we pray. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, our faithful God, always and everywhere. For with your only begotten Son and, the, and your life-giving Spirit, you are the one true God from everlasting to everlasting. At the dawn of time, you wrought from nothing a universe of beauty and splendour, bringing light from darkness and order from chaos. You formed us, male and female, in your image and endowed us with creative power. We turned away from you, but you did not abandon us. You called us by name and searched us out, making a covenant of mercy, giving the law and teaching justice by the prophets. And so we praise you, joining with your faithful people of every time and place, saying the eternal song, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When the fullness of time was come, you sent your son to be born of Mary. Bright image of your glory, he learnt obedience to you in all things, even to death on a cross, breaking the power of evil and freeing us from sin and putting death to flight. You raised him from death, exalting him to glory, and a new day dawned. On the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus shared food with his friends and his companions on the way. While at the table, he took the bread, he blessed it and he broke it and giving it to them, he said, take it, this is my body. He also took a cup of wine and giving thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Therefore, living God, as we obey his command, we remember his life of obedience to you, his suffering and death, his resurrection and exaltation, and his promise to be with us forevermore. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate his saving death until he comes. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration that all who eat and drink at this table may be strengthened by Christ's body and blood to serve you in the world. As one body and one holy people, may we proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, with whom, in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, eternal God, now and forever. Let's say together, Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The body of Christ. I eat this in remembrance that Christ's body was broken for me and I do so until he returns. Amen. Amen. The cup of salvation, the blood of Christ. We drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us and we will do this until he returns. Come Lord Jesus. We will now share in the body of Christ with those of us who are gathered. I hope that you too use this time to reflect on the great sacrifice that our Saviour made for us. Thank you. 
beautiful song. Uh, that song was Beauty from Brokenness. Come give us compassion. Change our love from a spark to a flame. How appropriate that is now that we are bursting with oil in our lamp to keep us fervent and burning brightly. Well, let us make a commitment now to live out our worship of the Lord. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and you brought us home. Let us say together, keep us in this hope that we have grasped, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, who has transformed those we remember today, rise and strengthen you that, they may that we may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. I pray, saints at home, that you will remain in peace to love and serve the Lord and that you will continue to worship him day in and day out, regardless of all the jobs that you need to do. Well, we're going to finish our service today. We're singing, Jesus put this song into our hearts. And why don't you, as you, before you finish off the video, why don't you go and start singing this song as you potter around your home? Have a blessed week. And I look forward to hearing from you throughout the week. Jesus put this song into our hearts. Just